Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this week's episode of Thursday's Theology. My name is Jeff, and I'm your host, and this is the first episode of our Summer with the Saints series. We had our intro last week with our, our good friend Jake, and uh, this week he is going to introduce us to the life of a saint. So, uh, Jake, what saint are we going to be learning about this week? Uh, we've already mentioned it multiple times, but we're going to talk about St. Augustine or Augustine of Hippo. Nice. So, Augustine... Um, I mean, my, my experience with Augustine is that he's one of the uh, foundational theologians of the Western Church. Yep. Um, but from what I understand, his his childhood was not the the most uh, saint saintly. Not at all. For <laughs> first first thirty years were not really. Uh, so Augustine was born in the mid fourth century in North Africa, actually. So he was uh, scholars think uh, he and his family were of Berber descent. Okay. Uh, Berbers are a nomadic tribe, and I think they live around like Morocco now-ish, kind of that area. Okay. Uh, his mother was a Christian, his father was a pagan, and uh, his mother actually delayed his baptism as an infant, which she, if I remember correctly, kind of regretted later because Augustine sort of went off the deep end. Mm -hmm. um, he ended up a playboy for the first <laughs> 30 years of his <laughs> life. Uh, mm -hmm. He was... He was extremely well educated and eventually ended up going to, um, I think it was, he went to Milan to either study or teach rhetoric, but um, he lived a very, um, you know, one of those classic wild, dissolute lives, even had a child out of wedlock with his uh, mistress that he lived with. Okay. But all the while, just kept searching on for truth, just kept, kept searching. And he eventually kind of fell in with a group known as the Manichaeans, who were um, a form of the Gnostic heresy. And he realized pretty quickly he did not like them. Okay. So and, hold on. Let me let me stop you right there. Yeah, of course. So you said Gnostic heresy? Yes. So give me... Pretend I don't know what those words mean. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the Gnostics were a were heresy, which is... A uh, heresy is defined as something which deviates from what we know to be the truth. Uh, okay. The truth as revealed by God um, in his church, through scripture, etc. Uh, so the Gnostic heresy, it's, th there's a lot to it, and it's come, it's come back in various forms throughout the centuries. But kind of the, the basic beliefs of it were you had to have secret knowledge to receive salvation. Mm. Um, they did not see body and soul as being one, but rather as being separate. Okay. And they saw everything in the created world as evil. Ah. Um, so with the famous uh, Cathars of the Middle Ages, they were a re uh, another version of Gnosticism, of this idea of two gods, the one who created the um, the physical world, the god of the Old Testament, as kind of like an evil, stupid god, and then Jesus being the good god, um, but believing he was only spirit. Uh, so they did not um, believe in the incarnation. Interesting. Okay. So... Uh, Augustine yes. fell in with these guys. Yes, he fell in with them for a little while, but very quickly became dissatisfied. Uh, and kept, kept, kept searching for truth. And the famous story of his conversion, which he relates in his Confessions, which he wrote, um, I think, about 30-ish years after the event, um, he describes, he opened up the scriptures, and it was uh, to Romans. And I forget which passage it was he read, but it really cut him to the heart, and he just broke down in tears mm. and he realized um how he needed to give his life to christ immediately and that was when he decided to accept baptism uh he was baptized by uh ambrose the bishop of milan who is his teacher and it was definitely to the great relief of his mother who is also a venerated saint saint monica and uh she had prayed for his entire life for his conversion and mm. not long after his conversion she finally died when mm. you know her mission finally accomplished interesting yeah but uh, Augustine was very much, if I remember correctly, uh, a student of Plotinus, the Neoplatonist philosopher. And it was, this was, so he's living in the late 4th century, early 5th century during uh, the decline of the Roman Empire. And this is, this is also a time, though, when Christianity has become legal. And you, you already have this tradition started with Justin Martyr in the 2nd century, but of, uh, kind of using Greek philosophy to explain the Christian faith in mm. apologetic form, in philosophical form, etc. Okay. So, and he did that in a beautiful, excellent way. And his understandings of scripture, of so many things, have come down to us today. And he's what he's most famous for are his two works, um, the Confessions, which is an autobiography, um, a very long, written out uh, confession to God about his dissolute youth and his regrets of that and his coming to the Lord, mm. and then also the City of God. 
uh, very famous, very huge book, um, which was actually inspired, he was inspired to write it after the fall of Rome in 410. Mm. Uh, but he, in that book, he describes the difference between the city of God and the city of man, how the city of God is eternal and how the city of man is temporal and um, on and on and so forth. So, yeah, I, I, just a quick story about city of God. Um, so I read through Confessions a few years ago for the first time right. and absolutely loved it. Like, yeah. I really loved it. Yeah. Uh, so I was just like, oh, I, I want to read more of St. Augustine. So I ordered, <laughs> on, on Amazon, I ordered uh, City of God. Yeah. And it didn't say, like, how thick it was. Yeah. So when I when I got it, I this should have been the red flag. When I, when I got the package in the mail, it was like a big box. Yeah. And I was just like, I only ordered one book. Yeah. I pulled that sucker out. It's like four inches thick. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's a tome yeah. of, of oh, massive yeah. proportions. Oh, yeah. Um, so I, I started it. And I think it's going to be one of those works that I, you know, <laughs> constantly work through for a few years. But <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, City of God is a massive, massive book. Yeah. Um, nice. Okay, so uh, Augustine had kind of a, a wild life right. um, in his early youth. Yeah. Um, so the conversion he had. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the way, uh, Jake mentioned his his mom's prayer, Saint Monica. Um, that's something that is, uh, attested to in his confessions where he talks about his mother's prayer life and how that, uh, influenced and impacted him. Yeah. Um, so I just want to say a quick note, you know, intercessory prayer is absolutely a key part of, you know, praying for somebody else and, and interceding on their behalf is, is really important and it can have a really profound impact upon their life. Right. Um, so, okay, so anyway, Augustine, uh, from the point that he was converted yeah. um, onward, what what was his life like? Uh, he eventually entered the priesthood. Uh, he, after his conversion, he decided to be celibate. Uh, mm-hmm. He, when the conversion happened, he was actually engaged to that mistress he had a son with. Mm. And, but he decided to break off the engagement and to become celibate. He, his, uh, his illegitimate son was actually baptized with him. Oh, okay. Um, but he, so he chose to be celibate, entered the priesthood, eventually became a bishop, uh, and became Bishop of Hippo in North Africa, which is, uh, close to Carthage. Okay. Um, so that was pretty much his, his career. And then also, you know, he, uh, he's again, known for the confession city of God, very prolific writer, Mm -hmm. but his, so he's also a doctor of the church. And what he really did was, uh, define and explain what original sin is. And Mm -hmm. he, he is the one who's really given us especially in the West, our understanding of what that is and what that means in our faith. Mm-hmm. So for those of uh, our viewers that don't aren't familiar with the term original sin, right? Um, what is original sin? <laughs> All right, you're going to have to bear with me. This is extremely difficult for me. But okay. um, original sin is can basically be seen as the natural tendency to sin that we all have, Okay. if I'm remembering this correctly. Okay. Hopefully I am, okay. <laughs> um, from what I recall. Uh, but it's, it's that tendency to sin that we all have, that we have inherited from our original parents, Adam and Eve, you know, by, by the fall of man, we've all inherited this, uh, natural brokenness, this natural Mm -hmm. sinfulness, um, which, uh, personally, my, my favorite analogy I've heard of it is, um, a child who's born to parents who are drug users Mm -hmm. is not going to be healthy. And in the same way, a child who's born to someone who's been affected by this, you know, great evil that is sin is not going to be scot free of it. It's going to mm. inherit it, sadly. Mm. Okay, so it's it's more it's more of an understanding that we as humans are born into a sinful, fallen world, and yes. we have the propensity towards sin. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um. So you're saying then that Augustine was the first one to kind of really develop that idea right that, that that idea was there from the earliest days of the church okay. but he he was the one who was really able to kind of explain it and define it and put it down in doctrinal ways okay. um his interpretations of scriptures also like the, the the insights god was able to give him that's it's really kind of been through augustine's um from what i've heard many times it's really been often through augustine's lens mm. that we have um read the scriptures okay okay um so Clearly, he wasn't Saint Augustine of Hippo at at that point. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, so when when was he canonized, and and what was uh, that process like? Um, so the canonization process has changed over time. In his days in the early church, it was 
in a way, kind of by popular acclaim. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> it, it's, it's definitely changed over time. It, 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 it was in the Middle Ages that the really um, defined set way of doing it now developed. Okay. Um, in his time, though, you know, he was known for his writings. He was known for his virtuous life. So when he died, um, from what I know, there's probably just immediate veneration. Mm. And added to the martyrology pretty early on. And so I, I don't know exactly how long it was after his death that he was canonized, but I would imagine the veneration of him probably started immediately. Okay. And it probably wouldn't take long for the church to just kind of say, yeah, sure, this is okay. This isn't uh, uh, in any way against the, against the faith. So. Okay. So in other words, the, the life he, he led and the, just the sheer volume of work he produced kind of, not guaranteed him sainthood, but he was on the track towards sainthood. Yeah, he, okay. he was actively striving for sainthood. and But being so well-known, what the position he was in, you know, God decided, okay, this will be one of my known saints. Got it, got it. All right, and uh, again, you know, like with every episode of Thursday's Theology we do, um, the conversation could be much longer. <laughs> um, so hopefully we've been able to highlight a couple of things of St. Augustine of Hippo and why he's important for us to to know and to understand. And uh, yeah, this is our first episode of Summer with the Saints. Uh, we have a few more. Um, Jake is going to be joining us for the next few weeks and giving us the life of a saint every week. And uh, we're excited to see uh, the fruits of this, this series. So uh, stay tuned next week for our second episode of Summer with the Saints. Uh, Jake will be back with another saint. And uh, remember, theology doesn't always have to be difficult. It is simply the study of who God is. Take care. We'll see you next week.